just so far will stop the vehicle, but additional equipment will improve performance and safety. When the brakes are released, the air pressure from the pressure side of the chamber goes back through the exhaust port of the brake valve. As airline lengths increase, air travel time to and from the brake chamber increases. Worse still, as air pressure decreases, air travel time increases, as would be the case during a brake release. Timely release of the brakes is as important as the brake application itself. So a quick release valve is installed between the chamber and the brake to shorten the brake release time. A quick release valve, such as the QR1, has only one moving part, a diaphragm. Air from the brake valve enters the QR1 at the supply port during a brake application. Entering air causes the diaphragm to seal the exhaust port. It also bends the outer edge of the diaphragm away from the valve body, allowing air to flow to the chambers being served. When the brake valve enters the holding or balanced position, Air pressure above and below the QR1 diaphragm is equal. The outer edge of the diaphragm will seal against the body. The exhaust port remains sealed. Like the brake valve, the QR1 is also now in the holding or balanced position. When the brake valve application is released, the air pressure above the diaphragm is released back through the brake valve exhaust port. Air pressure beneath the diaphragm lifts it, opening the exhaust of the quick release valve. This allows air in the chambers to exhaust at the QR1 rather than traveling back to the brake valve. The QR1, most often used on the front or steering axle brakes, speeds up their release. Because the driver and the brake valve are relatively close to the front brakes, the time to supply those brakes is very short. But the brakes farther away require help from a relay valve. Use of this valve on rear axle brakes, particularly on long wheelbase vehicles, assures simultaneous application of the front and rear brakes. A relay valve is usually installed on or near the axle or axles it serves, in this case, the rear axle. The valve requires a control or service connection to the delivery of the brake valve, a supply connection to the air reservoir, and delivery connections to the brake actuators. A relay valve speeds up the application and release of the brakes. It's essentially a remote-mounted, air-controlled brake valve. It applies or releases the brakes it is connected to in response to the control air from the foot valve. A typical and one of the most popular relay valves is the R12. It consists of a relay piston with an integral exhaust seat, the inlet and exhaust valve assembly, and various O-rings. With brake application, air pressure from the primary circuit of the foot valve travels to the relay valve control port, enters the small cavity above the piston, and causes the piston to move. As the piston moves, its exhaust seat contacts the exhaust portion of the inlet exhaust valve, sealing the previously open exhaust port. Continued movement of the piston unseats the inlet valve, this allows the supply air to flow from the reservoir past the open inlet valve and into the service portion of the spring brake actuator. When air pressure beneath the piston equals the service air pressure above the piston, the piston lifts slightly and the inlet valve spring returns the inlet valve to its seat. The exhaust remains closed. The relay valve is now in the holding or balanced position, and service line pressure is equal to the delivery pressure. The brake valve is also in the holding or balanced position. If air pressure above the piston is increased, as from a stronger brake application, 
the piston will again move in response to the added pressure, unseating the inlet valve. The inlet valve remains open until pressure beneath the piston equals pressure above the piston. Then the inlet closes and the R12 is returned to the balanced position. When the driver removes his foot from the brake, air above the relay piston returns to the foot valve and is exhausted to atmosphere. As air pressure above the relay piston decreases, the higher pressure beneath causes the piston to move away from the exhaust valve. This allows service brake air to return to the relay valve and flow out the open exhaust port. The brakes are now released. Here's service tip number three. Always replace a relay valve with the same or similar valve. Most service relay valves, including the R12, incorporate a differential or crack pressure. It's the amount of control air pressure needed to open the inlet valve of the relay valve assembly. The crack pressure must stay within plus or minus one PSI. The standard R12 has a four PSI nominal crack pressure. That is, there will be about four PSI above the relay piston at the instant the inlet valve opens. The R12 is available with crack pressures from the standard 4 PSI up to 10 PSI. Brake application timing can be affected with an incorrect relay valve. Now let's look at the last device needed in our basic service brake system, the stoplight switch, an air-operated on-off electrical switch. Generally, a switch is used in each of the service circuits. Two are used in case of a failure in either brake circuit. The Bendix SL5 stoplight switch is comprised of a body, a non-removable, non-metallic cover, piston, diaphragm, two contact strips with attached terminals, and a shorting bar. During a brake application, air flowing to the brake actuators or relay valve also reaches the stoplight switch inlet. Air pressure is immediately present beneath the SL5's diaphragm. When application pressure reaches or exceeds six PSI, the diaphragm moves, carrying the piston into contact with the shorting bar. With continued movement, the shorting bar snaps into contact with the terminals, completing the circuit and lighting the stoplights. Upon release of the brakes, air is exhausted from beneath the SL5 diaphragm, the shorting bar loses contact with the terminals, and the electrical circuit is broken. That completes the basic service brake system that will safely stop a vehicle in normal service. Let's take a moment to review. The E6 receives air pressure from the system's two circuits and applies or releases either the front or rear brakes regardless of failure in either. The slack adjuster rotates the brake camshaft, causing the brake shoes to contact the drums. Drum to lining clearance is also adjusted. Quick release valves ensure timely releases of the front or steering axle brakes. The R12 relay valve speeds up the actions of the rear brakes so the front and rear brakes apply simultaneously. Stoplights are lighted by the SL5 electrical components activated by air pressure. We hope your understanding of a simple service brake system and its components has been enhanced. For complete service and preventive maintenance information, Obtain a copy of the complete Bendix maintenance manual at a local authorized Bendix parts outlet.